The word stranger was originally used in the 16th century to refer to the Dutch and French-speaking families from the Low Countries, the areas we would now think of as Holland and Belgium. The first groups of strangers were invited to England during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Town councils were encouraged to welcome these strangers. In Norfolk, both Great Yarmouth and Norwich invited a number of families to live within their town. In Norwich, the mayor, Thomas Southerton, wrote a letter explaining the reasons for inviting 30 families to settle in the city. The letter explains that many of the city's residents were moving into the countryside, owing to a lack of work in spinning, weaving and dyeing, whilst at the same time many of the Protestant inhabitants of the Low Countries were seeking refuge as a result of persecutions under the Duke of Alba, who acted as governor on behalf of the King of Spain. Southerton continues by saying, And because the poor hair might be exercised in their spinning and wool work, a motion was made to Thomas, then Duke of Norfolk, then lodged at his house in this city, that at his return to London he obtained of the Queen's Majesty, who of her gracious goodness and merciful clemency, having compassion of the poor state of this Her Highness's city of Norwich, thirty master workmen to have either of them ten servants, to exercise the making of these commodities, with warrant to the mayor and citizens to permit them so to do. This invitation to improve the fortunes of the local people by strengthening the weaving industry was repeated by Queen Elizabeth I, who issued a public letter on the 5th of November 1565, naming some of the strangers and allowing them to bring up to 10 family members with them. After an escalation of the persecution in 1567, many more refugees followed. In October 1571, a census was taken in each ward and shows 3,925 Dutch and Walloon immigrants living in Norwich, 355 of whom had arrived in the last six months. The 1568 census lists the individuals who arrived in Norwich. They included Anthony de Solemne, the first man in Norwich to print books, who arrived with his wife and two children for Brabant, and Maria, the widow of John Fabia and her seven sons. The journey to Norwich took one of two routes, either arriving at Great Yarmouth and getting the boat up river to Norwich, or via Sandwich in Kent and then making the way overland. One letter from Andreas and Anna van der Haag states, We pray you, when you get to Newport, take the vessel that comes to Great Yarmouth, for otherwise you would have a day's more voyage. For when people come to Sandwich, it costs double, for they must then go on to Norwich. I have a gold coin. I would like to send it in the letter, but when you come to Norwich, I will give it to you, for then you may have nothing in your pocket. When you come to Norwich, you shall have gold. Once they arrived in the city, the strangers set about improving the weaving industry. They invented new types of cloth and took on English apprentices. They also created their own book of orders. Written in both English and Flemish, this book was a list of rules about the manufacturing of cloth in order to produce a really good quality material. However, the strangers didn't just bring weaving to the city. They also brought many items, types of architecture and words that we take for granted today. Dutch gables and crowstep gables can be attributed to the strangers, along with lucums. These are the large windows on the upper floors of buildings, created in order to get as much light as possible into the room where the weaving looms were in use. In addition, words such as planes, meaning open spaces, are from the Dutch. The Dutch also brought items with them, such as the canary, now a nickname of the local football club, and tulips. Places of worship were also set up for the strangers. The Dutch church on St Andrew Street and the French church on Queen Street. In the year 1600 alone, over 90 children were baptised at the French church. The experiences in Great Yarmouth were very similar, although in this town the Dutch and Flemish refugees were invited in to help improve the fishing industry. Queen Elizabeth I issued an invitation to 30 families in 1570. It read... To our well-beloved the bailiffs, justices and brethren of our said town of Yarmouth aforesaid, and to their successors, and to William Janssen, cowman, Adrian Nape, Daniel de Royal, John Van Purden, Nicholas Tuse, 
and to such other amounting to thirty persons of the countries of Flanders, Holland and Sealand, aliens born, not denizens, being all householders, master fishermen and other handicrafts. Permit to be inhabiting within the said town of Great Yarmouth, with their servants and families being Dutch or English. However, it was also decided in a series of orders made by the Assembly on the 6th of February 1573-4 that the men had to be able to make enough money to pay for themselves and their families and not to move away from the town and abandon their families behind in Great Yarmouth. They state that neither they or any of the congregation, their children or families shall be chargeable to the town and further whensoever they of their own good wills or by commandment from the Queen's Majesty's Honourable Council shall depart unto any other place, that then they shall carry away with them all the men, women and children that be of the said congregation. By setting up this order, the town made sure that the strangers had to look after their own poor. In Great Yarmouth, as in Norwich, the immigrants were also allowed to have their own place of worship. In this case, the court, held at the Guildhall on the 23rd of April 1604, declared that the strangers could use a chapel, which had been set up within a warehouse a couple of years previously. Over the years, the strangers in both localities have blended in with the locals. By 1634, it is known that of a congregation of 678 in the Dutch church in Norwich, 575 were already second generation immigrants. Their legacy lives on through their documents, words, items and architecture.